Oh, good morning guys. That was a pretty good sleep. The sun's just coming up now, but I'm in no rush at all to get going. See what the day's gonna bring. I'm gonna come out here and, oh, there's a light. It's on a timer, or not a timer, but a sensor. But uh, I can always, I wanna listen, see if there's any gobblers. There's turkeys around here. This turkey season's coming soon. It could be out this morning gobbling on the roost or just when they pitch down. I haven't heard anything yet. Well guys, time to see if that trap worked or not. The traps worked or not. I see that the water's flowing pretty good. So that tells me that the beaver hasn't repaired it. There's definitely not one in this trap here. I will check the trail camera on this one. Uh, we can also check the trail camera there to see. We have it overlooking this spot. Uh, and uh, I can see that there's nothing in it. On well, quick review of that trail camera, I noticed that there's a, a muskrat. It's not a beaver, it's much smaller. You can tell by the tail that it's not a beaver, it's a muskrat. And it's uh, pointing out a mistake I made, neglected. It's, it's swimming over top of the trap. A beaver will probably do the same thing. So what I've quickly done here is I've added a log on top. It's called a dive stick. That will ensure that whatever goes through there will come underneath it. Um, I don't want to catch the muskrat, obviously. But muskrat makes good table fare too, so if it comes through and it's a bycatch and I happen to catch it, I'm more than happy. Looking at this uh, break here, I'd say that's pretty good. Like, I don't want to break in any more than that. I need water for my traps to work. Then I'll add the other set. Well, earlier in the week, I came out and uh, threw this giant rock salt from Jurassic Rock. It's a giant brick. Actually, I shouldn't be touching it that much because I already checked the trail camera and a coyote came by and he looked like he took a poop or a pee right on top of it. The amount of disrespect, I'll never understand. But uh, it's anticipation of obviously collecting the different kinds of wildlife that are in here, the different kinds of animals that will use the salt lick. Uh, a couple years ago, I put it out for uh, deer and surprisingly enough the bucks came in it right away it looks like i've got some deer uh on it now and i've got a giant amount of turkeys in here um, looks like there's five good sized gobblers and a whole mess of hens but that's the wintering group they don't usually stay here they'll usually move through so it's not like i get to hunt all five of those gobblers they'll spread out a little bit but it's nice to see that they're here and uh, active so turkey season is just around the corner so anticipate that hopefully they'll be able to get out and hopefully there'll be some turkeys around here i do see some tracks which is a positive sign Well, it's uh, pretty unusual to get this nice a weather in the spring here in Canada. We're, we're sitting at a balmy 25 degrees Celsius. These are ab abnormal. Like the forecast for next week is going back below zero, which is below freezing. So we're, we're gonna get potentially some snow next week. So that's an extreme shift. So no surprise that the beavers aren't moving too good. I'm looking at that water, I'm thinking, might be nice to do a polar dip. <laughs> Trust me, that water, the temperatures are nice, but that water is gonna be ice bath cold, especially because it's spring fed. But uh, just reflecting on it, there's a metaphor there, reflecting off the water. That pond looks really good. 
I would be surprised if the fish don't thrive in here. <clears throat> the log jam looks really good. The edge habitat looks really good. I see a couple of frogs bumping around, spring peepers. They're kind of getting their throats going a little bit, but they're not quite fired up yet. It's still a little early, uh, but the warm temperature is really getting them excited. And there's even some water striders on top of the water. Now, naturally, there's no fish. I thought maybe I'd see a turtle, uh, maybe something over winter here, but we never dug anything up. So, I mean, obviously there's no minnows, there's no other life in there. There'll be some invertebrates and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we'll get working on that. We'll add some, uh, definitely some minnows. You guys left some comments about whether I should put crayfish in there or not. And the consensus was uh, they might make good food, but they also might want to burrow down inside the, in the geotextile, ruining it potentially. So I don't think uh, we will be adding crayfish, but uh, we'll be adding definitely some minnows and maybe some other species as well. Well, I don't know how many more times I'm gonna be walking through this back end of the property because what's sprouting is our Bass Pro Cabela's food plot. That's a, it's a perennial, I think it's called. So every year for the next three or four years or until it gets chewed up by the animals because it is a food plot. It's got rapeseed and chicory and things like that. It will mix, it's coming up nicely. So we'll have something that will benefit the animals around here. So guys, here is a sure sign of spring. We got ourselves a pretty fat looking garter snake. You guys can see him down here in the grass. But uh, garter snakes are not super common because obviously the temperature year round here is not super warm. So snakes and reptiles, turtles, all those kinds of animals typically don't do as well as they do in southern climates. I did know somebody who ate a garter snake. It wasn't me. Um, I have eaten a rattlesnake and I can tell you that it's quite bony. And uh, the person I talked to who ate the garter snake said actually the uh, garter snake was quite bony too. So definitely not on the menu, not legal to harvest here at least. Uh, rattlesnakes I believe are, so that's a completely different story. All right guys, what I did tell you, if we didn't catch a beaver by the second day, we would set another trap. I'm out here all week, so I think I make the most of it. So I got a little bit more work to do. We're gonna go head back closer to where the beaver lodge is and set another trap. Make use of this beautiful spring-like weather. So we really are kind of back to where we started on this misadventure. There's uh, all the damage it's doing all back in through there so we're kind of on the back end of the on the property here and uh that's what i'm looking at there's the beaver trail the beaver like to swim in water because they're not they feel a lot safer in water they're not having to be dealing with wolves and coyotes and bears who find them very delicious just like i do so i'm just going to make it a little bit easier to trap in here it's a little shallow at the start here, it's only like a foot. Of course, it's getting shallower as the days pass because I let a little bit of the dam go, as you guys know. So I'll set you guys up on a tripod here and you guys can watch the magic happen. Well, here's a look at the finished set. We got the camera just over here. I brought a uh, spice on the spice on the meat. I brought a poplar over from way over there. So that beaver's gonna be pretty excited to get his hands on that. And uh, we got a good approach all the way in no obstructions and then when we get to the trap obviously we're in business here i put a good ducking branch and some grass over top just to kind of blend it in so it looks pretty good all we got to do is wait if i get any activations on the camera it's going to mean maybe i'm going to be more excited to continue on with this because i don't see any beavers i'm going to lose interest real fast And I really wanted to just be out here for a week and then experience the times when there's something to do and the times there's nothing to do. Just relax and sit in the sun, sit down by the pond. I do need the relaxation, so 
I haven't had a smoke fish in a really long time. I just use a bunch of roofing nails, a fresh cut piece of cedar from the sawmill, and a fish trout actually from the pond, and then some maple wadobo. And I did uh, pre-debone it. There's still gonna be a run of bones. Actually, I'm gonna ask Clark from Linden Trout Hatchery what he does with that run of bones. If it's smoked, it won't be so bad. Ooh, that's hot. You gotta switch sides. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting burnt over here. But uh, there's always a row there. I think there's probably a good way, decent way to cut it out. Um, and then the other thing I like to do is make sure that I've got my uh, fish on the smoke side. Uh, I don't have it quite right yet. This, the wind actually shifted on me. It was coming this way when I originally built this stand. So I've got the stump that I can move and uh, I've got an adjuster here. So what I can do is throw it down and then depending on what kind of pitch I want, I can move that up or back. And uh, for sake of getting this nice and close, we we'll move these back rocks out of the way. Poof. Okay. And then we can get that right in nice and tight. And I don't want my hand to be where I'm counting one, two, three, four, and I gotta move my hand out of the way. That's too hot. This I want to cook low and slow. So that'll be good right there. Just a little bit of smoke rolling up and uh, lots of nails. If you're trying this at home, lots of nails and lots of nails at the top too, especially if you, got, uh, if you have a bigger fish because it'll, it will want to fall. Well, this my friends is a freaking work of art. Like you can't hang it on the wall or nothing, but uh, you can definitely taste the difference. Cedar planked, trout. Look at look at the serving in the presentation on that. Like you could literally have all kinds of dinner guests over and feast on that. You're like here's your plank, dig in. So I, I cook this probably for uh, four hours, at, at least four hours. Um, very, very low, very, very slow. And then near the end, I just flipped it over uh, so that the face was down to kind of cook the middle part here. It's been a good, good day so far. The mosquitoes are coming out. I had to close the door for the cabin. The good thing is the mosquitoes are coming early. This board's so hot um, that if it gets cold again, it might be able to burn them off. Or freeze them off you get an early warm spell like this up to 25 degrees all those mosquitoes will hatch and then gets cold and kills them off that's a hope we'll see at least it won't kill all of them because they don't all hatch at the same time but it'll definitely kill some of them off which will be good because it uh, with the swamp down here it does get pretty buggy wasn't sure if I would like that flavor from the cedar i've heard of you know cedar planked fish before but never big on like getting the flavor but because it was it was low enough and slow enough it's got like just a slight hint of cedar and it's actually really good that way Well guys, 
That's it for me. See you in the morning. Uh, good night. Sun's just coming up there. Looks like it's gonna be a good day. I'm really liking the fact that I don't have to put a fire on in the morning. I slept in just just my t-shirt, no issues. I feel like I should just sleep in. <laughs> so all I gotta do is check my traps. And then of course there's a bit more work to do if I end up catching something. We shall see, on with the day. Only one way to find out if we got food. Go check the traps. All right, up and at them. I got Holden here. You guys know Holden? He's my son. He's not so, so little anymore. He used to be, I think last time you were on dedicated on camera, you were like that high. And now he's this high. He thinks he's taller than me, but not yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's my porter for today. I thought I'd take him out and uh, show him a thing or two about trapping. As you guys know, you know, it's been a, it's been a tough time trapping. So I told him we're gonna check the traps here if they don't, are not successful. Then we're gonna move um, this one here. This one here is the one that I think is not very productive. It looks like it's been moved to be honest. Like, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe it hasn't been touched. Do you see where the trap is? It's pretty good, pretty well hidden, huh? Yeah. And this is probably maybe the least productive one we have because it's, uh, it's in the shallow end here and the beaver really has to go through that in order to fix here. And here's an optional one. So this is really like kind of duplicated as far as oh, traps go. So we'll pull it out. Uh, that, that's been fixed. So I don't know how that beaver got through there because that's the only way you can get through. Is there a beaver in there, Holden? So that's a live trap there, guys. I gotta watch it don't get the chain in there. But uh, I don't wanna have to reset it if I don't have to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, these are the safeties on, there's a safety there. And there's a safety on the other spring as well. Technically safe. It, uh, it will still open up a little bit if you hit the trigger. So I'll just show you. Um, but because the springs can't all the way open, it's, uh, it's not gonna clamp too bad, but I don't have the other safety to hold it. So we're just gonna bump this a little bit and that'll open only as far as these springs will go. So give you an idea what that looks like. There we go. So you see how it can't spring all the way because the, the springs only went uh, one inch or so and opened up. But now this track, this trap is packable and uh, as long as those springs are locked in place there, safe. So well, let's check the camera. We'll see if that beaver was actually active over there. Got uh, nine total activations since I started. I don't know if I changed this card since I've been here or not, but ha, we got a big fat goose. That's hilarious. The big goose went by twice. Must be looking for a place to nest. Oh, only a big fat goose. So we can take this with us. We don't need this, leave this here anymore. Check the other camera and we'll see if that beaver went by, but um, maybe the dam plugged up on its own. I don't know, but a beaver definitely didn't come by that area and uh, we'll find out if it went to the other trap here let's have a look so when your traps don't work it's obviously really hard to learn whether or not you know what you're doing wrong so i can tell you that that trap is empty yeah I, i'm gonna leave that trap i think that's still a productive trap check the camera here and see see what's going on so no nothing on the camera there so the beaver didn't come through i think the water levels just got so low that it's kind of plugged itself out on its own but uh, if the beaver does want to come back here and do some maintenance, that's a good place to keep that trap going there. All right, Holden's got a big beefy present for the beaver. What does that look like? Log. 
look it's got beaver chewed on that side so the beaver really wanted to eat that but we brought it from like way uphill to this trap over here in case there's nothing in it we we'll use it as a little bit of bait so give the beaver some incentive to get its button gear over here and doing something and uh, it looks like once again we are fooled by the uh, very wise old beaver it looks completely untouched it looks like it's it's a good shape uh, the water depth has declined significantly so at some point in time this beaver is going to have a, had enough of this business and it's going to go plug up that dam or he's going to run out of water awfully quick so i'm going to put this in the channel like as if it's a live tree in front of the camera because i'm curious if the beaver is going to swim up to it and start chewing it like it's a submerged tree like it flooded it out and got an easy easy bait i don't know if the tree if gonna, the beaver is going to look up and be like huh there are leaves on there or not because it doesn't want to eat the lower parts but it would want to eat the top part so we'll see put it in front of the camera and see what happens here watch out it's going to splash see if we can get it low enough to stand up <laughs> think that's going to work holden maybe maybe see if that beaver We'll tilt it this way a little bit so if it chews it it falls that way we'll see if that beaver starts working on that and knocks it over all right well let's check the playback here i'm always curious i don't like to wait home to check uh we do have a nighttime activation but it looks like it's just a raccoon making use of my land bridge i made it's walking literally over top of the dive stick okay well that's no good to me mr raccoon this one i can't see oh it's another raccoon it's bizarre how many raccoon there are. I'm just randomly setting this up in the forest and it's raccoon after raccoon. There's the daytime one, that's just me. Oh, look at that nice view of my butt. My, yeah, there you go, that's for the ladies, I guess. And the rest of it is just me setting it up. So freaking raccoon. So the beaver didn't even come over here last, last night. So pull this card, replace it with another one. Keep trying, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a tough beaver. I can tell already. Well, I'm always sure that when I get to a computer, laptop, or a desktop computer that I have a bigger screen that I could really analyze exactly what's going on. So initially I thought this beaver was pretty scared of the camera and on first approach it actually was. If you saw the first uh, video in the series at the log cabin, you'll know that that beaver was startled. And then I thought it came in from the uh, left hand side of the frame here and entered so it looks like it actually left that time that direction but here it just reappears suddenly and um you know I, I watched this and i was actually very surprised by what happened now i don't know if you can tell but uh that beaver looks like it went underneath the trap and having set this trap i know it's maybe two or three inches on the bottom watch here that stick on the right of the trap moves and then you can see the water ripple behind the trap it rises up it makes a little reflection and if you keep watching at the very top right hand corner you're going to see at the very very end of this frame you're going to see that the beaver the beaver rises up out of the water and you'll be able to see the glare from its eye right at the very top uh not the very very top of the frame but near the top right about now keep watching right now see it you see the little eye so that beaver managed to get underneath the trap that was only a couple of inches off the bottom so that's going to give me some ideas about how i should be setting those traps and i need to definitely make sure that they're anchored tightly against the bottom so that that beaver doesn't swim underneath them Well, I did come up with a backup plan just because it's not been super successful. So we are, we are going to eat beaver today. Holden and I are both going to eat some beaver no matter what. So stay tuned. Keep watching. It's a little bit of a surprise. Get this card back in here. And uh, hopefully we have a nice spot to set up uh, this, other, this other trap. Otherwise, we're just kind of going to be at the whim of the beaver getting a little bit dumb. And uh, finally, us being able to cheat it. 
Well, that looks good. And uh, it's just such a nice day. I couldn't not bring Holen out here to dine on some beaver. All right guys, so we got our final set here, except I haven't broken the dam. I'll break that. Well, I'll do it now. I'm only gonna let a, look at a trickle out. That's gonna be enough to make that beaver really upset. We also put some caster right here. The trap is at the top of your frame right there. So this beaver is gonna have to come over here to fix this or else he's gonna lose all his water because we're awfully close now to where that beaver lives. So if you didn't notice that the water levels were declining before, he's gonna lose another inch here. He's gonna learn real quick. Beavers hate the sound of running water. There we go, that's the sound we're looking for. That's gonna work, Holden? That's enough, eh? Just a little bit of trickle. Look at that, he's gotta swim right in there. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Not like that. Understand? Your hand can't be up. We got the big surprise. Holden uh, is just getting them unbagged right now. Show us what we got. Holden, lift it up. Let's see. What does it look like? What is it? Beaver. What do you see? Beaver, beaver burgers, homemade beaver burgers. Okay, so inside there, I've also got some bacon fat. So grab the bacon fat there, Holden, grab it out. Yeah. Bacon fat, you gotta get a stick or something because we don't have any utensils or nothing. So save that back, bacon fat. Put the bacon fat in the pan, right? And then what goes next? Beaver burgers, that's right. And then we'll throw it on the uh, fire here. It's nicely burned down. Holden started it himself using uh, newspaper. So that's a theme from, if you go back and watch the previous videos uh, you'll see that uh, that's how my dad started fires with newspaper at the cabin because that's what we had available Ooh, that's a good good smoking hot fire so you thought you were gonna get bacon today we got bacon so get all that out there that's gonna take you a while at that pace let's see what you can do oh all of it oh all of it man of course you want lots of lots of bacon in your beaver man did you think you're gonna be eating beaver today yeah you did no matter what Probably. Yeah, we didn't catch one, but we had one. Had one anyway, in the bag. Beaver burgers. So what do you think of that? Looks good? You hungry? Yeah. You woke up an appetite? In the swamp chasing beaver? Yeah. Ready to eat? All right, man. Well, we didn't earn this beaver, I did. I caught it earlier. So, it's authentic. I made those burgers myself. I don't know what I put, I can't remember what I put in there. It's a little bit of onion. Put some adobo on there. Got some lettuce, tomato. So the story behind these is, uh, I was catching so many beaver, caught them all together, and then I did a big up grind. Dad, it's beaver roll. Beaver roll. <laughs> uh, of the meat, put it all together, added some onions, I think some adobo spice, mixed it all together. And then I formed a sheet on a cookie sheet, and then I spread it all out on, uh, on the sheet, and then flattened it all down, put it in the freezer, and then uh, when it came out, I cut them all up, or just before they, before I froze them, I should say, I cut them all up. And then when, when they were frozen, I was able to break them into chunks. So get nice little square patties. And uh, it also lets me know what kind of burgers they are because I make the beaver ones into squares and the, the ground uh, venison is always in, in chunks. 
So I have some options with that. But uh, I'm going to keep after this beaver back there and I'll go as long as I can. It's supposed to get a little cooler in temperature, which means that beaver won't spoil as, as, as easily if I do catch it. So some beavers are just a lot more challenging to catch than others. I think the older the beaver, the uh, trickier it is to catch. But uh, that beaver is probably at least two or three years old. It's been there for a while. There's another guy who traps back there and uh, I don't think he hasn't been trapping and it's more on the uh, neighboring property than ours. But we're at the very back corner now with that last set. So I think that'll, that'll do the trick. These burgers are looking pretty good. smash mine. How about that? One, two, three, go. Well, good day? Yeah. Good day. Did you learn something about trapping? You don't get one every time. You don't get one every time. That's a good lesson. I like that one. We were thinking about that one for a while, huh? Yeah, there you go. Well, how about that? We did one. We did get one a while ago. Did you ever visit this trap that I said? You ever so. seen it? Yeah, I cleaned the beavers at home before, but that's pretty good. We got a, a double burger from the bush, bacon, bacon baked beaver from the bush with wadobo. You excited for that? I am. I don't know why I get cherry tomatoes every time, but there I do. I got cherry tomatoes, I smooshed them in there. Uh, I used the sopped up the bacon. I am breaking my rule, I'm not supposed to eat any carbs, but you know what, it's hard to eat a burger if you don't have any bread. So, you gonna dig in? Go for it. It's good looking meat. It looks good. It looks good. What's your favorite burger? Tell everybody. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you do. He's gonna say it's Wendy's. Yeah, Wendy's is the best though. Wendy's is the best, he says. Well, I don't know if this is going to match up to a Wendy's burger, but it might. It's going to be a mouthful. That's for darn sure. Look at that. Lettuce, tomato, delicious wadobo, sweet baby rays. I was just bread. You just got a bread bite? No. You got to dig deep on this one. Mm. Look at that deep, red, delicious, wild meat. Yummy. Mm. I mean, beaver meant for the win. Eventually that beaver is going to be, he's going to screw up. It's like hunting. Eventually, you're in the right place at the right time. Very strong flavor. Strong flavor, huh? Nothing like a piece of beef. Er. Yeah, beef. Beef or. Beef or. You like it? Uh, yeah, a little bit. It's tolerable. Tolerable. Well, I would say that's pretty good. Could be a lot worse than tolerable. <clears throat> I bet you if there was some bacon on there, you'd be really liking it. Some cheese and some bacon. Yeah, cheese would make it better. It's not really sharp flavor though. There is, like you can tell it's white game, but it's not overwhelming. Yeah, no, not, not terrible. Plus you got a double, so it's like twice as much meat in there. Twice as much punch. Try and talk holding into doing a polar dip with me. Water temperature is like, it's basically zero degrees Celsius. It's as cold as it's gonna get. Wanna jump in? Wimpy. Like having you guys along. Give holding the thumbs up. And uh, I'll see you in the next installment of this adventure. 
See you later. I like it. What's wrong with it? Uh, it has too much onions. Oh, so, like... it's, so it's the onions that's the problem. That's not the beaver. Yeah. Well, come on now. Get some culture. <laughs> Trying to hide the onion flavor with all that ketchup. <laughs>